We are going to go to Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11 is my text that we're going to look at this morning. And I want to preach this on this subject. The significance of the blood. The significance of the blood. Kind of fits in with Memorial Day when we think of Memorial uh, we're remembering those that have given their lives up for our freedoms, but we also remember the one who gave up his life for our spiritual freedom. Amen? Uh, the truth shall, shall set you free, the Bible says. And so I want to look at this thought, the significance of the blood, and this great verse of Scripture. Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, the Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the what? The blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the what? The blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. We're going to take this verse and look at the three points here in this verse of Scripture. But just to give you, uh, uh, bring, it, bring it up, this chapter, in this chapter we see, uh, as God gives us here, uh, the importance of the blood. Now, the book of Leviticus was written to the Levites, the tribe of Levi. They had no parcel of land in the promised land because the Levites were to take care of the temple and the worship of God and all that was part of that. Part of being a Levite was being the janitor of the temple. They had to keep it clean. Somebody has to keep it clean. Amen. And so that was an important part. So they were a part of that. And uh, then um, part of the, the job was the sacrifices. The sacrifices took a lot of work. And there was a lot of significance to all of these things. And keeping it all maintained. And so they had importance. And here in Leviticus chapter 17, God is teaching them and teaching us the importance of the blood atonement and this system and plan that God has set up. The day of atonement was the very heart of this sacrificial system that God had planned and God had set up. And so God is giving us here the reason why blood is required. Many people have said about our faith and our belief and our process of redemption, salvation, many have said, well, that religion's such a bloody religion. Yes, it is. Yes, absolutely it is. I don't make any apology for that, all right? No apology for it. This is what God set up, and God has his reasons. God doesn't do anything unreasonable. He has his reasons for everything. I think part of the reason is answered in that first phrase, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Think about it, all right? We'll come to that in a second, but God is giving us here the reasons why the blood is required. We see it in the opening phrase here of this verse of Scripture. And this statement was given many years before modern science discovered it. All they had to do was go back to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? I mean, years ago, there were doctors and scientists that said if you had a blood disease, all you had to do is drain the blood out of a person and the blood disease would be gone. Well, that's true, but the truth is also the person is gone. Amen. Um, I think it was George Washington that the doctors put leeches on him to take out blood because he had blood poisoning or some kind of blood issue and, and take out his blood and, and think they used leeches to do that. Can you imagine going to the hospital today and they said, we're going to do a leech treatment on you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How many have an experience with leeches? Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. There's a lot, of, a lot of insects and things that God has made and animals and things that survive on blood. 
That's what they do. And so it is significant <clears throat> when we think of the blood. We, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we sang a song already this morning, saved by the blood of the crucified one. And we sing about it and we celebrate it. <clears throat> there are churches around that have taken out the songs about the blood because they don't want to offend people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you're offended, I'm sorry. That's what God says. And so we don't mind singing songs about the blood because the blood is what washes away our sin. And we're going to look at that. And I think you'll learn something a little bit today. Now, I don't I don't claim to be a scientist or a doctor or something, but we're going to look first of all. My first point today is the fact of science. The significance of the blood, the fact of science. Again, Leviticus 17 verse 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. An adult of average size normally has about six quarts of blood. The colorless fluid of the blood or plasma carries the red and white blood cells, platelets, waste products, and various other cells and substances. Now, I got, I got some of this information off of Google, and you know, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true, right? Okay, so listen, if you're a doctor or if you know a little bit more about this stuff, I'm sorry if I got it wrong, go tell Google, all right? Blood disorders, there are blood disorders, include, I'm going to try to pronounce this, polycythemia. I think it's called polycythemia. An abnormal increase in the number of circulating red, red blood cells. There are other dis, uh, disorders that are called anemia, leukemia, hemophilia, other things that have to do with the blood system. The blood is so important to us. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the body tissues and removes carbon dioxide and other wastes from our body. I, you know, it goes, of course, goes through the liver. The liver, I think, is what purifies, what cleanses. And, and all of those things need to be in proper order. And they told me when I had last year my bypass surgery, they said one of the things is that we want to take care of this now because your liver is good and in good working order and your kidneys, what are your kidneys? They are purifying also. They are in good and good order. And if you had a problem with that, it would complicate things. And so right now, as far as those things are concerned, you're healthy and uh, the, it's a good time. You'll have good recovery and probably won't have any real complications, at least with those things. And so, um, uh, that is important, and and they, you know, there's machines and there's things, and they put blood into you, and people get all kinds of things with their with their blood and the blood system. It assists in healing and purifying wounds. I heard recently that uh, there are some doctors that are w with some kind of uh, uh, what is it, what um, tissue is issues or muscle or ligament issues that they will do something that draws the blood to that place because the blood, are, the God has made us to where our blood and our bodies naturally heal themselves. And that, um, that's a miracle, you know? I mean, just when you cut your finger and the, it starts to bleed. Now, my brother taught me about blood system. When he, when I'm not kidding you now, when I was like in fourth grade and he was probably in fifth grade. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? That's the smartest person on the planet right there. And I remember my brother, and I can't remember what we were doing. We were probably working on our bikes or doing something. We may have been out cutting wood or something. We, ha we had to have something because I don't remember. If, if I got cut or he got cut or somebody with us got cut, and my brother's over there saying, make it bleed, make it bleed, push it, make it bleed. And I'm going, you're supposed to stop the blood. You're supposed to, no, no, no. The blood cleanses that wound, especially if you get cut with a piece of metal. You want it to bleed because it cleanses it, it keeps it clean. And then you get the blood stopped. And, 
And, and, and my brother, I, mean, I was learning from this wonderful scientist that knew. <laughs> make it bleed, make it bleed, you know. But there's truth in that. Amen? I mean, when I almost cut my arm off, when I cut it off, I didn't have to say make it bleed. Boy, there was blood going everywhere when I did that. Uh, sometimes it's a good thing, just don't bleed too much, <laughs> right? And uh, it, it, it is purifying, it's cleansing. Isn't that something that the blood does cleansing? Wow. It is the blood that gives life to our bodies. It's cleansing and it's life-giving. <clears throat> I'll never make it through this sermon unless I settle down. I keep telling myself, settle down. Boy, this is good. I love this. I'm going to give you point number two is the fact of history. The fact of history. Look at Leviticus 17, verse 11 again. The fact of science is for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now here's the fact of history. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. We go back in ancient history and we see the significance of the blood in the Bible. You think of this. In creation, God made blood. God made blood. I mean, not when he created the plants and everything like that, but when he created the animal kingdom and the fish of the sea and the animals, you know, God made blood for them even before he made it, a human being. <clears throat> and so it is significant. In creation, God made it. And then in the fall, I, I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 3. And uh, we'll look at a couple of verses here in the book of Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter 3, verse number 21. Even in the fall of man, the blood was significant because we see here in Genesis 3, 21, after the, um, the fall, man's fall into sin, the serpent came and deceived Adam and Eve and they ate of the fruit and they fell into sin and, and punishment. And then we find in Genesis 3, 21, well, uh, previous to that, they were trying to hide from God because they had sinned. And the Bible says they took leaves and tried to cover up themselves with leaves, but that wasn't enough. Now look what happened in verse 21, chapter th Genesis 3, 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife... Did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them? It's a significant picture here that the leaves that man tried to grab and cover himself with were not enough to cover them. So God killed some animals and took their skin, the Bible says, and made them coats of skins. God did it. God took the life of those animals, the first sacrifice, to signify that for eternity to cover their sin and wickedness, most religions today are like Adam and Eve grabbing leaves off of trees and trying to cover themselves. But the Word of God and the truth of God's word is, God made a sacrifice to make a coat for their covering. The fact of history, in recent history, uh, we find that uh, some years ago, they started with blood transfusions. They started to figure out the life of the flesh is in the blood. It started with blood transfusions and then blood banks and people go in and give blood and they store up blood and they have blood uh, uh, stored up to help people uh, with their, uh, you know, illnesses, diseases or, or accidents or things like that. There is stocked up blood. There's banks of blood. Why? Because, hey, blood is healing. Blood is cleansing and we need it to live. It is significant. Significant to us that we sing songs about it. 
And we don't even, we don't even blink an eye because, because of what the Bible says here. Because we look back at our history and through the scripture, we find it's all about the blood. The preaching of the word of God is preaching about the blood. I mean, I, I'm preaching a whole message on it today. And it's mentioned in most every message and sermon. And why? Because it's the significance of the blood. We talk about this, that the importance of our church and the message of our church is the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. The book is what talks about the blood and teaches us about the blood. And it's the blood that gives us the blessed hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Folks, without the book, we don't know about the blood. And without the blood, we are hopeless. Without Jesus Christ. It's significant. God brought it all the way through the Old Testament and in His law. By the way, there in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 3 that we read in verse 21, that was before the law was given. The law of the sacrifices and all of that was all a part of that. The fact of history, the significance of the blood. My third and last point, which will probably take most of the time of the message, is the fact of theology. The fact of theology. All of this points to this as well. It all goes together. It is significant. We talk about the law. It's part of the law. Go to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 6. Now we know that the ceremonial law and those type of things were given in Exodus and Leviticus, but the law started way before that. It started just after Adam and Eve, but it also was, uh, was uh, repeated here in Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 6, where the Bible talks about Noah and his family rescued in the ark, and then they come out of the ark, and God gives them some instructions, some things. He says in verse number 6, Genesis 9, 6, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. This is part of the law. If you take a life, if you shed the blood, then your blood should be shed. Life for a life, that's part of the law. The Ten Commandments repeats this. When Moses went up to Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments from God in Exodus chapter 20, it says, thou shalt not kill. And that phrase, that wording of that is the talking about the taking of innocent blood. God says, don't do it. You have no right to do it. Of innocent blood. Now, of course, he gives governments uh, the authority to take the life of someone who's taken another life. That's their job. But it's not for individuals. It's not for us. Thou shalt not kill. Don't take innocent blood. And then we look through theology. We see, as I mentioned already, the sacrifices that he talks about and, and the rules that were given here, the death of the animal was a reminder of some things. When they took their sacrifice, when they took that lamb into the temple to be sacrificed for them, and that lamb, the, the priest would cut its throat and the blood would come out and the blood was shed and that lamb was made as a sacrifice, it was also a picture of death and a reminder that this, we're all going to die. We're not going to live forever. We're all going to die. It's appointed unto man once to die, the Bible says. And so death had to be part of this. And so the shedding of blood to cause the death of that sacrifice, that animal, it was a picture of the fact that one of these days Jesus was going to come and shed his blood. It was a picture. It was a picture that we are past, that we that are saved are past from death, Unto life. I'm so glad. I think Brother Jim said this morning about the cross. 
The cross is a symbol of death, but it's also a symbol, the cross, of life. Hey, the shedding of the blood was a picture of death, but it's a picture of life. Why did this all take place? Why did this all happen? Why is it so significant? Because when Jesus went to that cross and shed his blood, three days later, he rose up from the grave. Amen. Amen. And so ultimately, it is a picture of life. This is why the blood is so significant. Now turn over with me to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. I want to read some verses here that show the significance of the blood. We talk about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Matthew 27, verse 22, Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Verse 24, Matthew 27, 24. When Pilate saw that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, Look what he said, I am innocent. Of the what? The blood of this just person. He said, I, I don't want to be guilty. I, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. He called Jesus a just person. See ye to it. Now look what they said. Then answered all the people and said, His blood, what his blood be upon us and our children. We'll take the Guilt will take the blame. It's our, I, I, we're, we're responsible for this. Yes, they were. And so were we. Our sin is responsible for crucifying the Savior. Verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe and when they platted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe from off him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. They took the Lord of glory and they beat him and they spat upon him and they took the hands that had touched blind eyes and made them see and caused the leper to be cleansed and caused the lame to stand up and walk again and caused the deaf to be hearing and healed them, those hands that had <clears throat> reached out and love and compassion and mercy and they nailed them to a cross. His blood was shed for us. Go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. And verse number 25. Whom God, the Bible says, has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood. Is the blood significant? Of course it is. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. His blood is what washes our sin away. Is it significant? Wow, it is so important and so significant. 
In God's word, we are taught that the blood was sheltering, that his blood is atoning, that his blood is liberating, and that his blood is cleansing. See, redemption requires that we identify with the death of another. All of us that are saved and born again, we identify with the death of someone else who paid the price for us. That's what redemption requires. In the Old Testament, it was that animal as a symbol that Jesus was going to die. But today we remember that Christ died for us. For the Bible tells us that it's in the cleansing of the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Go to 1 John chapter, let me see, chapter 1. I'm going to finish with this verse of Scripture. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, that is, if, if we're saved, if we're born again, if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now notice what He says. And the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. That's why we rejoice in the blood. It's not because uh, we're some kind of weird people or crazy people. No, this has been since time began. God started all of this. And so we're not going to apologize and we're not going to change our preaching and we're not going to change our singing. We're still going to sing songs that say there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty state. We're going to sing, dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. Sinner friend today, if you're lost without Christ, hey, your rescue and your deliverance is in the blood of Christ. Come and accept that as the payment for your sin. It's the only way that your sin can be washed away and that you can go to heaven for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Is in the blood of Christ to save your soul. Christian today, when you think of all that Jesus went through in the blood that was shed for you, what have you done for him?